What's up, everybody? Welcome to Batman Unmasked, your reaction show for Batman The Telltale Series. I'm your host, Greg Miller from KindOfFunny.com. And before we go any further, this show is going to spoil the events of Batman Episode 3. So if you haven't played that, don't watch this. This will continue to exist on the internet until you're ready. Let's meet the panel. Nicole. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. Lead writer on this episode, eh? Mm -hmm. You did a good job. Thank you. Who's your favorite character to write? There's two of us sitting yes. here. Oh, I was going to say, if wisely. it's not one of us, don't say it. Well, Just keep it to yourself. The people who are in the Children of Arkham. No! She got Spoken it. like a writer. She got that really, really <laughs> well. The misleading, yes. Yeah. Jason. Hello. You're the penguin, Oswald Cobblepot. You just ruined it for everybody. No, everybody, no, everybody knew. It. Well, you don't have the accent. I expect you to come out. Like, is what? You, you mean like, hello, ladies and gents. There's the one. That's Batman. The one. See, usually Telltale hires these hacks who just talk. Yes. And like, this is uh, do a voice, and they just do their voice, and then they get hired. And that's and then, it. That's it's, it. It's like you, a dog and pony show. You tried. I like. I did. That. I made an effort. I'm glad. I'm glad. And hey. Hey. Aaron, how are you? I'm good. How are You're you? You're Vicky Vale, right? I am. Do that voice. Yeah. There it is. Wow. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Now you deserve a mic clink for oh, that. Yeah. That was brilliance. Yeah. Sheer brilliance. Yes, let's sip. Let, let's, let's start at the top. I've wet myself. Did you really just get it all I over did. yourself? I did, I just, Come on. I'm full. Yeah. This is one minute. One, one day to wear light pants. The one day I choose. You, but nobody knows what's going on underneath no, here. No, they don't. So it's And fine. that's a good thing. Yeah. I'm so glad to be here. Aaron, yeah. let's start with, uh, at the top, you are a bitch. I, in Come episode on. one, I chose you over Jim Gordon. I, I gave know. you the evidence. I know. End of episode three, here you are, stab me in the hand. How's that feel? Lady of, oh, well, How's Lady of you, you said that you wanted to marry Vicky. Ooh. In a, in a previous, in a previous episode, one of these guys, you were like, I'm gonna marry Vicky. And the whole time I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> sucker. <laughs> Well, There's as someone who has been divorced before, not the first time I've been played. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't. I that yeah. was the thing when when it was when the fight happened in this episode with who would become Lady Arkham. We'll find right. out, you know, actually get a name for it. I'm racking my brain. I'm like, is this an original character? Who is this? Wh who's underneath the mask? Yeah. And then at the end, when you stabbed me, I was like, oh well, she's been possessed too. Nope, she's just in charge of the yeah. whole thing. Oh yeah. man, talk about a no, lead anvil dropping. Yeah. Oh, so good. How, how long did you did you know from episode one that was the character arc? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, when I auditioned, I didn't. Um, and then I showed up and we started recording. Like, oh, by the way, you're you're like, you're gonna turn on him. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, because traditionally she's been either an ally or a romantic interest. Um, and everyone got really comfy with that. Even though yeah. I feel like Telltale yeah. was like, we're gonna we're gonna change things up. We're gonna like. People who are normally one thing might not be that, and everyone's like, okay, but no one seemed to suspect that Vicki Vale would. No, I mean, that's what works so well with what you guys are doing with the series, I think, is the fact that you started us in a very safe spot that felt like Batman, and then slowly we started going, and even, I, you know, at the end of episode one, when it was like, tell me everything, I thought for sure Alfred was gonna have some story about the photo, and it's like, no, the parents, they just suck. The, <laughs> the Wayne sucked, <laughs> yeah. it turns out. Yeah. Your parents are terrible people. Yeah. So have you guys, I mean, have, when, talk to me about, you, you guys switch off who's gonna be lead writer and how it all works together, right? Mm -hmm. For you coming in as lead writer on episode three, Nicole, what does that entail? How does that work? It's basically like we're working with the designer, and shout out to Emily Garrison, who's my lead designer on what episode three. What up, Emily three. Garrison? Uh, yes. Uh, we sit down and we, uh, we know where the plot is going, but we have to do more detailed story outlines for each episode, and then we are responsible for getting all the content finished for each episode, so we write and design the whole thing. Um, and we have to sync up with other episodes and make sure that our cliffhangers are lining up with where they want to start. Um, so then, why would you do why would Why would you do this? <laughs> why would, I was, was going to marry her! <laughs> <laughs> well, she played you, man. I know. Oh. God. Yeah. At least I've always known she where I stood it. with you. That's you know right. I mean, Jason? Well, you know, I'm gonna touch you back. Because Please. that felt really good. That's why um, I, You know, I... The thing about Oswald in this universe is he's so different from anything else you ever get to see in DC. Mm -hmm. And he's so grounded in all of the backstory and all of the reasons for him to be the way he is yeah. that in episode three, when all of a sudden I'm, I'm reading the script and I'm like, I, I what? I walk in to take over Wayne Enterprises and I'm pretending to be posh? And I'm like, yes, this is so great. I mean, the multi-dimensional nature of his character is so thrilling. And thank you so much for writing that stuff uh, because... Every time I read it, I'm just salivating 
when you show up and go, oh, Bruce, that's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> you know, he's just such a piece of garbage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, yet, but yet, because you know he was betrayed by the Waynes, and right. be, you actually care for him. Yeah. You've managed that, right, as a writer, to, to make a lovable person you hate. That is so, that's a, such a challenge to do, and it's, it's achieved, I believe. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what they've done, I feel like, with both of your characters, yeah. right? And the way that, for, we talked about it before we came on, right? Penguin's always this crime boss, whatever. Yeah. Even Batman Returns plays around with a bit where it's like, okay, yeah, 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 but yeah. he's got flippers, and he's like this yeah. monster. Which is how I do my voiceover, actually. Oh. <laughs> I, have them, like, I have them, like, bind it up, and I'm like, wah, 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 wah. okay, I'm ready to go. But to have it come out this time where it is, you know, the Waynes are at the root of everything that went wrong for yes. the Cobblepots. So not only does it make sense, on a, I feel sorry for Penguin, yes. I now understand why his relationship with Bruce is fractured and all these yes. different things. Yes, and it's grounded in that. Yeah. So that everything else, you know, that you see him doing when he's on stage, you know, gesturing with guns and shooting people, for a second you realize that, oh man, but for those things that the Waynes did to him, he wouldn't be this guy. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of, you know, Consequence regret um, situation is something that Telltale does very well. They let you know, kind of, even with the people you don't get to make the choices with, how those things impact life in the story. Yeah. And then yeah, and same thing for you, Aaron, with I mean Vicky Vale and the fact that you broached it before, but I mean I think for most of the time she is window dressing in a Batman story. You know what yes. I mean? And and well I want to talk about now what it's like to have those reins off, but I actually have that clip mm. of you mm. stabbing Bruce. Seriously? And breaking my heart. Oh, yeah. Yes. Look, you're it's like you knew. You're doing these transitions. I am. You should just host a show from now on. No. Okay. No. <laughs> I'll co host. <laughs> okay. But I, I I never you're you're tall and I'm short, it wouldn't you're work. You're right, it wouldn't yeah. work. Let's see the clip. Nice statement. The press seemed to eat it up. I did what I felt was right. Yeah, well, someone has to. I just didn't think it'd be you. Dropped your pen. That's not... You feel that? That's the drug taking hold of you. Don't fight it. You? You're with the children of Arkham. No, I am the children of Arkham. I think it's time you knew my real name. I am Lady Arkham. And you already know the Penguin. Look at him up there, taking everything that should belong to you. Mocking you, the smug, insignificant bastard. It would be so easy to get rid of him. Who else will deliver justice? So what is that like to get to flip that switch? To oh, go from... it felt so good. Yeah. Because uh, throughout, especially episode three, we, that's when we really started to inject a little bit of Lady Arkham in your interactions with Vicky. Mm -hmm. Like it, it slips a couple times, and when you get to meet with her in, um, in the park, like there are some times where she gets a little bit sharper with you, or like she she sounds like she really believes in the Children of Arkham's message, and that was just like getting so close and finally like okay this is full this is just you go full out and it's like yes <laughs> so exciting, and then getting to hear like the the Lady Arkham voice underneath that is very exciting too. And so f for you when you're doing episodes one and two, are you when you're doing your Vicky Vale voice and you're you know you're very effervescent, you're very like out there for the story kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to put a tinge of what Lady Arkham would be come or an underlying current? Or are you trying um, to play it like it's weird to think of an actor playing a character who's acting a certain yeah. way? Yeah, I mean it depends on the situation and it depends on your choices. Mm. Like um, it, it's. It's different if you've been very nice to Vicky the whole time, if you've been very friendly and you've, you've helped her out and you've given her information. And it's different if you've been rude and you've been like, stop talking to me, you're a nuisance. Um, you might get a little bit more of Lady Arkham in that scenario, which is, it's cool. So yeah, there's, there's the multi-layers of Vicky and then there's also just the way that Telltale games are made. There's sure. all those different branches. Is that fun to write or is that totally complicated? It's complicated but fun. Like I was talking to Aaron earlier, I remember when we were recording that scene in particular, because it's both Vicki Vale, who is Lady Arkham, but we don't know it yet, Batman, who is Bruce Wayne, Vicky doesn't know it yet, and there's so many nuances to the way that they need to talk to each other and the information that they know and that the other person knows that they know. Um, but it was really fun getting to see Vicky finally become who we knew she was gonna become. Yeah. But then now you go the opposite way. Your character flips the switch and has to start pretending to be a Bruce Wayne kind of character. Right, to be, you know, 
a bit of a corporate marauder, but nice in front of everybody. Yeah. And, and like offended that, you know, Bruce is angry with him and like, oh, you've hurt me, dear. I mean, you've got a temper. Uh, like, whoa, to be, to have gone from a guy who's on stage shooting people yeah. to a complete pretender to the throne and have it be legitimate. Like, the moment you see him, he's walked in and it's done. I love the scene where he's like, Bruce has to collect his things yeah. in front of Oz. And Oz is like, you know, picking up the picture and the whole thing. And it's, it was just so, so fun. The way you guys wrote that scene, it was heartbreaking for me to just think of Bruce's position in that moment. And then delicious as an actor to just hop along poking him in the face, <laughs> you know. See that was I hated that scene because like the, yeah because I, I, I I'm I because I you know I, I try to be a judicious judicious Bruce Wayne right yeah well, judicious ju 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 Bruce Wayne who knows jujitsu exactly yes. <laughs> I try to be a good guy okay and so when I'm doing the Bruce Wayne stuff I'm playing nice I'm doing the nice yeah. things when you when I we get introduced to Oz the first time in the park I'm talking to him as if I'm not thinking he's going to become the penguin yeah because you even want to see that and even after he becomes the penguin I'm talking in the office I'm like I'm gonna play it cool I'm not gonna get emotional about this. But then you're such a dick, and you break the you, my watch is in there, and you break the watch. Oh, I'm sorry, Bruce. You, no, that's you're you're being patronizing right now. <laughs> you weren't sorry. I'm it was so, did it on purpose. So sorry, Greg. Dude, that's why you can't. Have and I was in, the, in my head. Then I started playing around. Like, why is he? I understand. He knows those aren't my pants. Oh, so sorry. No, Greg, oh, please. Yeah. Don't make me pay for that mug if you break it. That's why you can't have nice things. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I think that's what makes it so great, though, is like the character of Oz in this game. Like, you love to hate him. And you, you, he's just charming, and so even when yeah. he's being a dick to you, you're just like, I like it, but I hate it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Thank yeah. God you're nothing like that in real life. Yeah, at all. I mean, yeah. you're, you're, you're being serious, right? You brought me this hat. Yeah, I did. I think it even goes kind of with the jacket you picked today. Oh, you mean this jacket available at kindoffunny.com slash store? Bam! <laughs> That's what we call a setup, man. I got my Joker makeup on. Whoa! Now I got makeup on me and people are going to wonder where I'm Maybe, you know, been. you probably just got to take that shirt off. That's right, right now. Do, Did you hug do, us in do the Do a game? little cobble hot. No, I didn't hug him in the game. <laughs> How do you feel about that? The cobble hot that is taking the internet by storm? I'm going to pretend like I hate it. <laughs> I would be so, be so disingenuous for me to say anything more than just anything with hot after it. I'll take that. I think it's amazing that a character who most people have just abject gross reactions to in, in previous sure. you know, incarnations sure. can be considered that. I mean, that's great that, that Telltale can take that um, character and all of a sudden make him attractive in, you know, people would consider even calling him cobble hot would never have happened in the past. Sure. So yeah, I mean, and on a personal level, uh, very gratifying. <laughs> well, they based the entire look on you. So. Yeah, they yeah, did, yeah, yeah, yeah. actually. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't have my head shaved on the side anymore, but it's still okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing that like, I, th I, I find the most interesting about uh, this season, right, is the fact that at the end of every episode, I'm somehow, I find, more excited for the next than I was when I went into this one. I was already excited for this. I was excited for episode one, yeah. but episode one And that's ends. hard. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us all about how you did that. <laughs> you, all by yourself. It's all no, your fault. What else me. helps you? Uh, your don't look into the crowd. None of these people no. have anything to do with they it. They don't <laughs> They weren't there. No, like, everyone's been working really hard to kind of have this new, fresh take on Batman and make sure that the characters feel genuine and yeah. they're interesting to talk to. Um, and so we've all just been pushing it and trying to make sure we don't rest on what people know about Batman. Yeah. To try and keep you excited to play the next one. Was any of Oswald's character choices informed by like the character design? I mean, the mask is so original and different. I mean, wh what phase does that happen versus some of the writing choices? Like, are you informed by that as a creative person? They're or? kind of happening at the same time. Like, I remember with the mask we were seeing, I didn't work on episode two, but they were kind of writing it along with getting yeah. the art in. And art has been taking a lot of great liberties with making the character their own. Like, yes. they didn't want to do the typical Penguin, they wanted to make it a new Thank goodness penguin. for that. Yeah. I wouldn't have been cat. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to be the round guy? I did. 
I thought you'd be rounding fat. Man, the penguin. No, I don't think so. Mm. I just don't know if that would work. When you come in for the character, though, since it is a different one, you come in to audition, what is the audition like for that? Um, actually, yeah, I, I remember the first time I auditioned for this. It was out of my home studio, and I had, they had a picture of him, thankfully, thankfully, because the dialogue could be construed as, you know, they had uh, some dialogue about, everyone on the floor, now, you know, and just your valuables, ladies and gents, and they said that a little bit about where they wanted the accent to kind of be. But when, they, when I saw the picture, and he was this young, attractive, a little bit rough guy, I thought, oh, wow, this is amazing. This is so helpful and informing to where you want this to be, because they kind of want him to be able to be liked. Mm -hmm. That's a different thing. You have to honor that. If you see that kind of visually, now you have to say, okay, well, he's not gross. He's somebody that someone could fall in love with if he weren't a psycho. He's somebody that you, you, you want to love to hate. And it, 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 it informs the read because you have to honor that. And doing an accent is always terrifying because you never know. There are people from the UK and we're gonna play this game and you're like sweating bullets. You're like, oh my gosh, are they gonna hate Oi, me? Oi, governor, this guy right. don't sound like <laughs> a snowy <laughs> now. I don't, want, I don't want to come out sounding like Dobby. You know? <laughs> Please don't stab me. Ah. I, I, I want. I want people to enjoy playing the game and not be taken out. You know what sure, I mean? I want sure. them to be in the story. And there was this dialogue originally written in the audition sides that kind of gave, forgave some of that because Bruce kind of says to him, well, you know, your accent's a bit muddled or all over the place. And Oswald says, yeah, well, you know, I've been around a bit since I've been gone. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. they kind of were thinking that it, it doesn't really have to be from a specific place, a specific town. It's that Oswald hasn't been able to latch on to anything since his family's been taken away from him. Mm. And he had to get as far away from Gotham as possible, and that's kind of where he ended up, and now he's back. And so it just kind of, you know, takes away all of that. Giving that freedom to be able to do that kind of took the sweat off of, you know, accent and regionalism. Yeah. Whatever. Well, it plays into the fact that, like, these villains are, like, constructs of, of events and consequences. And, right. And how unbelievable it is what masks, the role of masks in this. Yes. You know, like, yeah, everyone right. has, has a mask. A mask. But which one is it? You right. know, like, right, what, right, right. It, what do they feel is their real face? Right. Which and one? Is Oswald is really more exciting. the penguin? Or is Oswald right. more Oz, exactly. Bruce's friend? Exactly. Or I just is he got just the being title manipulated by... Unmasked. <laughs> 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 Batman unmasked, three masks. I always thought it was just about Batman. It's about everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Should have been asking questions a bit better. <laughs> about that every time. Uh, Aaron, a question for you, though. Yeah. Is for you, how does auditioning or getting involved with this game work? Because you are one of the Telltale players. You yeah. know what I mean? Where it's like you're, you know, Tales from the Borderlands, The Walking Dead. You're in these games. I always listen for your voice. Does that mean that, like, do they just come to you now and beg you to be in it? Or do you come to them and beg them? Or do you just no, that'd be nice. Else? That'd be yeah. real nice. We've always got a place for you, Aaron. It's great. No, I audition every time. Uh, yeah, and this was particularly interesting, especially once I got cast and found out that she was, like, villainous. Yeah, because yeah. this is my first telltale villain, Ooh, you know? Like, the first yeah. time I really... Because I'm normally either, like, uh, you know, the, the confidant or the, the good, the sidekick, the yeah, friend. Yeah. Um, and now I get to pretend to be the sidekick and the friend yeah. and then kind of ruin everything for everyone. And that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and maybe it helped the fact they're like, oh, it's Erin Yvette. Oh, she's always, you know, you know, that your 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 ally. Like, don't worry about her. Oh, that's right. They've been playing yeah. you from the beginning. I yeah. know, it's one long they con. They double played you. <laughs> I think it's they both played that. you with a casting choice. That's some <laughs> brutal, brutal right there. Man. I think it's both that and what you brought up before about Vicky Vale in canon is yeah. kind of always in this particular role. And so we lulled everyone into like, it's Erin Yvette, I know who it is. Yeah. Like yeah. and then turn it on. And the fact there. that she's a reporter is a perfect cover because yeah. she can pry into, she can ask all these questions and be really nosy. And you're just like, ah, uh, mm -hmm. just stop being such a reporter. And it's like, oh no, she's she's getting real dirt on you. And yeah, just, yeah, it's really cool. That's why she's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> She's always there, every time. Right <laughs> present. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk more about this episode, less about these chuckleheads. Yeah. One of the things that I think a lot of people have been talking about, both in reviews and then just online, is the the old uh, the uh, oh. Batman. The and, romance. And the ba yeah, the romance. That's what the kids call it these days. Right. My apologies. Uh, let's take a look at the scene, but then I want to talk all about it. Okay. Sure. All right. I think the place has charm. What's charming about it? The leak in the ceiling or the dirty underwear on the floor? That's not what I meant. Mm. I was hoping for something more than that.
Mm. <laughs> oh, doctor. Oh, and I'll tell you the what. Temperatures up in this room. Right, I know. Right I mean, yeah. Oh, my goodness Somebody gracious. Somebody needs to turn on the air conditioning. So was that another one you guys knew from the get-go you yes. wanted to get to? Yeah, well, even when we first started doing outlines, we knew we wanted to have the scene. So... And this luckily, it's so Batman you. game. This is why it's a Batman it. game, so that people yeah. can sex up Catwoman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it done. was just, it was, it's so well done in the way of it wasn't gratuitous, it wasn't mm -hmm. like over the top, it was super sexy, obviously, right? But it wasn't like TNA sexy, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Now, for the record, I made her do it herself. Yeah. When she's like, gonna help me with this thing? I'm like, no, I wanna watch you. <laughs> but it, which is in character, kind of. Totally, right? Yeah. I mean, Bruce is so laid back, you know, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you know, exactly, Batman's exactly. a very low key guy. So then what are the stats looking like on people who are going to, I assume most people end up I, I think, I don't know the exact stats, but I think most people yeah. romance Catwoman. Yeah. Who are the poor losers who don't? What, what is going on? People were able to remember Harvey in that moment. <laughs> oh. Ow. I love that. We all knew from the beginning they weren't going to make it, OK? I'm going to be honest. All right. I mean, I'm a villain, so I don't really, you know, I'm like, yeah. whatever, you know, Harvey. I'm sorry. Too bad, Harvey. Well, no, for me, I mean, the seed of this was planted uh, in episode two, when mm -hmm. we're behind the car, and it popped up yeah. of, do you want to kiss her? The, it was one of those, whenever you read a Batman comic or you see a movie or whatever, you understand that like the, the writer or the author is implying that there's this connection, right? This unspoken bond between Catwoman and, and Batman. And that was the first time I ever felt it in terms of like, we just went through this amazing fight scene that was so well done and you get out and you're huffing and puffing and there's that moment. I'm like, yeah, I want to kiss her. And it, 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 at no point was I like, oh, right, but Harvey. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards she makes the reference. I'm like, yeah, but like, you're probably screwing him over. Like, I don't think this is really going anywhere. I'm sure this, I'm Look, doing this him a favor. this is for Harvey's I'm good. I'm this is exactly what you thought. Well, this is totally for my friend's him. good, okay? You, we for his well-being. He'll thank me in A lady years. like you and him, I just can't see it's it. It's just so. not gonna work out, yeah, yeah. I need so, to take care of my friend. So by the time we got there, it was a very interesting, there was no, there were no, I wasn't gonna think of Harvey, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, could Most Batman? He had forgotten about him for a long time. Batman? <laughs> The world's greatest detective, this, he can fight 30 guys at once. Could he maybe close the door quietly on his own? I'd like to think so. <laughs> but apparently like, one Siamese like, cat can throw like, every bat like, plan. Could you see him like, you know, Lucius, I need a piece of tech. Just something that closes a door. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you know he doesn't need to do that on his own. You have tech for that. Cat at my foot. What do I do? Pick it up. You know, just grab it by that and do that. The cat is the true villain of the game. Oh, that's really gonna be the Arkham cat. Yeah. She's just gonna. She's like, she's like McGonagall, like whoa, across the stream. What the heck was that? So All of a sudden she's dame. You knew you wanted to get there, but when you're actually there at the precipice, the game's about to come out. Are you concerned? You know what I mean? Like. Video games and sex, it's something we don't handle well necessarily. Sometimes. Right. I mean, we were definitely nervous about it. And even when we first pitched this scene, we weren't sure how it was going to go over. We hadn't done this at Telltale yet. And uh, like we were up really late sending snippets of it back and forth going, is this OK? Is this too far? Are we going yeah. like in a bad direction with this? And so we were checking in constantly. Um, and we made something that we felt really proud of. like. It was important to us that you got to open up with Selena before you. That conversation is really key to that, mm -hmm. um, and making sure that you two have that connection and you feel like this is the person who knows who I really am and I know who she really is, and that's why you two are so close. Um, and then we wanted to make sure, obviously, that we didn't go much farther than unzipping her cat suit and implying the rest, because uh, most often in video games you get into that uncanny valley kind of right. thing. So. You took it farther than I thought you guys were going to. Yes. When she straddled yeah. him, and yes. she's like, are you going to do this? I thought I'd reach for it, and I'd get ha slapped away. Slapped away, yeah. Because you guys didn't want to animate it, because yeah, you're yeah, lazy. Yeah. But no, like, I actually, <laughs> I got to pull it down, and then there. I love it. It's like, telltale hashtag lazy. Like, what? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, so it was, no, I thought it was really well done. And now we're, yeah. yeah. see, my thing, this is why, where I'm well, at, right? Transition. My <laughs> whole thing was, I was more, I, Harvey, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was like, what about Vicki Vale, though? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like she, Because she gets, the, the Vicki Vale character, again, traditionally, is the one anchored in the Bruce Wayne life and the life he should want and where he right. should want to go, what Alfred wants for him. Mm -hmm. And then you turn out to stab me in the hand. Yeah. That doesn't mean they can't get together. I am still hopeful. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's more the, I don't know, under the influence of drugs or something. I mean, I don't know. Sure, sure. It could all happen. Yeah. yeah. I'm open to anything. You yeah, put the hat it seemed on, like once people knew that they could start to, to woo Selena, they were like, 
I'm done with Vicky. <laughs> it seemed pretty clear that people like had a choice. Um, that's and that's, so unfair. That's, that's, well, it's no. I mean, it's unfair. fine. I, I delighted in watching how people reacted to Vicky. And, and I'm waiting for our romance. I wasn't bummed that they weren't <laughs> eager to like romance her. Workplace relationships don't go well. You guys, you guys, you guys work together. <laughs> no. Like, you know, no. She, you're her underling in the game. You can't. That can't be a couple. But that's okay. No. She made a dude attack you. Y yeah. I'm a forgiving guy. <laughs> That's good to know. For, for the scene, though, in, you know, the way it all plays out in episode three for me, Harvey hadn't been burned. He wasn't two-faced. He was just straight-up Harvey. How complicated was it to get to that point and have the confrontation, you know, the Selena stuff, with a Harvey who could still be whole or Harvey who could be already screwed up? It kind of took thinking of Harvey as two different people. Like, after that point in episode two, he became, like, we have undamaged Harvey, we have damaged Harvey, and we have to treat them as two separate characters. Mm -hmm. Like, damaged Harvey has kind of all the stuff that he talks about where his face is messed up, he's losing confidence, kind of blaming himself for what happened to him. The one who got saved by Batman has a much deeper connection to Batman, but because of it feels like, you know, he wasn't able to save himself. He needed someone else to come in, so he's feeling paranoid, like... The children of Arkham are still out to get him, um, so we kind of wrote them as two separate paths to get to that point. Wow. And then we figured when he sees Bruce in his underwear in Selena's apartment, like that's going to make him snap a little bit, no matter what. Um, but we'll see where he goes in later episodes too. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and I still feel so bad for Harvey. Like he <laughs> breaks my heart. Like <laughs> even just like knowing we had to take him there, just seeing it happen. He's such a nice guy. He's a teddy bear. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry your job's so tough. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know it was hitting you this hard. You know? no. But no, that's the I thing for Harvey. me with my alternate reality, Harvey, that isn't Two-Faced, but now after this is already showing the signs of it, yeah. I can't wait again for episode four, episode five, to see yeah. how it will, for my Harvey, turn into that, or if it will or if it won't, because you guys like to torture us and do yeah. things. Yeah. So now, let's talk about you, though, because we talked about the Switch being thrown. Yeah. And so episode four is going to pick up with you in charge of Wayne Enterprises. Yeah. Being now, because I, I, I think when the, it gets set up and, you know, when Penguin starts coming around, I thought of him more as, you know, he's going to be up against Batman right. in terms of being straight up Penguin. Whereas right. now it seems like it's almost a switch role where Batman is now the one who's going to be operating full time and instead you have to try to play being Bruce Wayne instead of that. Hide your, your alter ego now is this one that's the public facing Bruce Wayne yes. kind of thing. It, it, it drops you into a, the complicated reality of what it's like to be Batman on the other side. Yeah. Because now you're like, oh, I have to. I, I don't just get to be Batman all the time. I now have to deal with the consequences of a life as Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that, that sort of idea of equal weight, you know, often gets lost, that Bruce Wayne often gets sort of short shrift, you know, in, sure. in a lot of the stories uh, told about Batman. But in the Telltale game, you have to wear the mask and you have to not wear the mask. Batman unmasked. Yeah, right? Oh, there's a little plug. But you, 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 and you can't escape that. It's inescapable. And that when all of a sudden you realize you're no longer in charge of your company and you no longer you have that wonderful asset and that thing that you depended on, what do you do? What happens? Mm. There is some great stuff that happens that I'm not even going to talk about. That well, it, we have it, a clip. No, you don't. Yeah. You, from the next episode. Shut up. Of you, Cobblepot, dealing with the Batman. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> would you like to see it? I would. Crowd, would you like to see it? Yeah. Yeah, Let's you see want it. to see it? Want to see Pangy? Let's do it. Useless, you, you're all bloody useless! Hey, it's the bad. You're a dead man! Well, if it ain't the biggest bleeding pleasure to see your sour mug again. Glow while you can, Cobblepot. I'm taking you down. Mm. Yeah? I don't think so. In fact, I think it's you who's gonna get beat by me. You're outmatched here. Give up. What? Because of all those fancy gadgets? You know, I like your style, Batman. I really do. But you're really starting to be a pain in the ass. Oh, I see. It helps you plan things out ahead of time. Neat trick, though. Pretty flashy for someone who only wears black. How? Not just for fashion, it's very functional. Face it, Batman, you're outmatched. Without your tech, you're just a man in a pointy ear costume. Come on, Batman, show me what you got. Oh, wait, here. 
<laughs> I'm not supposed to be wearing it now. You can do whatever you want. I, totally I bet you have something for Batman. I bet you've planned something out for Batman when you say come at him. I, I doubt he's just going, all right, I can take this guy. <laughs> I, I doubt that that's the Penguin's MO. Yeah. yeah, he's got something up his sleeve, all right. I'm a big fan of the new monocle, if you will. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Where he's like, I love how they're throwing the bits and the pieces in that you know of Penguin and then giving them grounded reasons to be there. Right. That it's a piece of stolen tech. Yeah. Um, that, <laughs> and to turn Batman's own, you know, some of his biggest weapons are now in the hands of the Penguin. I mean, where he's, you know, got the tech. What do you do now with that? And yeah, so uh, that's, the, that's the excitement thing, or exciting thing, I should say, yeah. going into this episode and seeing this clip is the fact that, okay, now he has the tech, he well, has yeah. Wayne Enterprises, he has the Children of Arkham. What does that look like to see yeah. someone who can match Batman on that scale? Right, that he's literally sitting out there, come at me, Batman. Yeah, yeah. And like, whoa, he better be really confident to say that. Batman's like six feet away, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, he is really confident. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, whenever we bring the voice actors on, Telltale asked me to embarrass you both oh, yeah. and have you do oh. like scenes and have you talk. What? So what I want to see is Vicky Vale okay. interview Cobblepot. All okay. Right. Uh, uh, oh, like this. This was his preliminary. Like, exactly. can you be my henchman? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You're right there. See, oh. Right oh. There. So this is Vicky as Lady Arkham. She's let down the mask. Interviewing Oz to come and be her right hand man. Exactly. Okay. 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 So this is, this is the private, behind closed doors meeting. Scene begin. So, you have a plan for Gotham. I do. I, I have this desire to see the truth come out. Oh, and yeah. I think you might share that with me. <laughs> well, you're a reporter. That's all you want to do, is tell the truth, the truth, the truth. Yeah. So, what's in it for me? Well, I think you might have some investment in this as well. well you know about Bruce Wayne. And yeah. his family? Of course. Bruce and I go back a ways, I guess. And how do you feel about his family, his parents? They took everything from me. What are you suggesting, I'll get revenge? I think that would be quite fun, don't you? <laughs> yeah, it'd be quite fun, but I don't know if you've noticed. You can't throw a rock around Gotham without hitting a window Wayne Enterprises owns. True. So how do I do that? Well, what if we could get everyone in Gotham to start telling the truth, whether they wanted to or not? <laughs> now you're pulling my leg, telling the truth. Mm -hmm. We're well, just going to walk up to them and ask them the hard questions. You're going to no. flog them to death with the paper. No, I'm just going to walk up to them and stab them with a needle and inject them with a drug. You got some kind of drug? I've got plenty of it. That makes people tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so what do you say? Can you be my, my right-hand man? Well, I don't know about right-hand, but... Uh, do like to keep everything that Wayne has when it's over. It's up to you. I'll think about it. I'll let you know. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You don't even need to work here. No, they, I'm you can go just set them down and they make the game. I'm gonna go on vacation, so yeah. <laughs> bye, everybody. I am a little bummed we didn't get to record together, even though we don't talk to you each too, other right? at all. <laughs> I was gonna say, hopefully, maybe in later episodes, we would get a chance to interact. have a little tete a tete. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah, it'd be fun. Please. <laughs> and I'm still up for the romance between us. I'm just saying. Yeah. All right. You know what? We the, can have our own little, yeah. our own little scene. I mean, I'll be, Batman's just watching at the glass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm wearing Catwoman suit, you know. And she's like, "Do you want to do that yourself?" I'm like, "Yeah." That's it's it's all like it's really sweaty in here. Sorry, it's sticking a bit. I mean, this thing is stuck onto my skin. I don't know how the hell she wears this thing. This bloody, this bloody thing is tight. <laughs> so tight. Panel. Thank you for your time and your excellent work. You guys make a great game. I'm a big fan. And of course, to you, thank you for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Batman Unmasked. Remember, every time Telltale puts out one of these Batman The Telltale Series episodes, we come back with one of these shows where we spoil everything and talk to cool people. If you like that, like their YouTube channel, subscribe, do it, all that stuff. If you like me, follow me on Twitter. If you like cats and stuff, donate to like the Humane Society. I think they do stuff. And until next time, no, it's been our pleasure to serve you. Yeah!